let's cook a beef and broccoli with a chuck roast, y'all. That's my chuck roast. That's my seasoning blend, my seasoning that I mix up myself, my cast iron Dutch oven. And let's get this roast seasoned up real quick, y'all. Just use whatever seasoning you like. This is mine that I make with granulated garlic, granulated onion, black pepper, and salt mixture together. Uh, just taste it and make it as salty as you like it. Let's get it all seasoned up. I'm going to put a little olive oil on. Get it rubbed in really good. Make sure it's all generously covered. You're just trying to get a crust on your chuck roast. The chuck roast, this chuck roast was really, really tender, y'all. Uh, it's actually at the end of the video. Stick around, you'll see how tender it is. Now I'm going to flip it over, put a little more olive oil on, cover it again with my seasoning. Got to pat it right there, y'all. Just pat you. Pat your little roast. Put a little more seasoning on him. Put it on generously. Get it covered. I'm going to wind up, after I get all of it seasoned, I'm going to stick a little olive oil in the, my Dutch oven that's already heating up. <clears throat> Make sure that it uh, gets hot enough. I'm going to also add about a tablespoon of butter in with the olive oil. It's only a couple of tablespoons of olive oil that you need. Just a little bit drizzled into the bottom of the pan just to help, you know, coat the bottom of the pan so you can brown. That's a bell pepper and onion. I only had an orange that I got chopped up. And I'm also going to add that with my uh, seasoning blend. That was my arm in the way. There goes the chuck roast. Just making sure it's kind of hot. Go in with the chuck roast. Get it up to temperature, medium-high heat. Once it starts, uh, I kick the heat up a little bit to go ahead and help it brown some. There's uh, my paprika I'm going to use, some granulated garlic, some bouillon cubes on top of the garlic. I am also, which you'll see, see, just get you a good little brown color. Get it on both sides really good. And once it gets both sides, just kind of start picking him up a little bit with the tongs and kind of get your edges the much as much as you can it's kind of tough doing that especially with a roast this tender uh it didn't want to stand up good i actually tried to grab it with my hand you'll see right there and it's actually pretty hot so just kind of hold it up let it get the uh you know around the edges done get it brown as much as you can and we're going to be pulling him out of there and it is hot i'm trying to flip it it's really hot. So just get it browned all the way around. You know, doesn't have to be perfect. All this little uh, pieces and stuff, y'all, is going to actually make the uh, the gravy that it's going to make. This thing's going to make its own little gravy. Not much gravy at all, though. It's going to cook out as it cooks. After we get everything kind of together, we're going to be going in the oven with the whole Dutch oven. So just kind of get him out. You're not trying to cook him. Now we're going to... All that nice little grilled pieces and juice in there. We're going to go in with the... That was about three quarters of a bag of frozen seasoning blend. We're going to go in with that one chopped onion and one bell pepper. You can use whatever color you like. I actually like the colored ones. They're sweeter to me. Now I had to go kind of throw my stuff in the sink right there, y'all. I'm kind of one that... Uh, and grab my spoon. I kind of like to wipe up as I go. I don't like to make too much of a mess. You know, if I can kind of cook and clean as I go, just better for me. Less I got to do. So you want to cook your vegetables down, y'all. You want to actually cook them down till they kind of start to not just translucent, but you'll start seeing them. I'm going to stick those four bouillon cubes in. I do wind up adding a little bit, about a palm full of seasoning. You'll see that in a few minutes. So just throw your bouillon cubes in the bottom. They're going to dissolve. You can use the paste if you'd like, uh, better than bouillon or whatever it's called. Uh, strictly up to you. I like using the bouillon cubes because we get them from Sam's in a big bottle, and they last me a long time. That's just my opinion. And it's you know seems to be cheaper for me. Because I'm going to make a little bit of broth anyway with a couple more cubes in a minute. You'll see that shortly. So just keep stirring this stuff, y'all. There's my seasoning mix. I mix it in those clear bottles, y'all, after the sea salt was out. So I can kind of see how much I put of each. I can kind of tell. Just get a palm full. 
throw it in there. I'm going to go ahead and get a little paprika. Get a little paprika going there. And I am going to stick a, a, about a quarter teaspoon, depending on how much heat you like, uh, of cayenne pepper. Don't overdo it with the cayenne pepper, y'all, unless you like a lot of heat. Like I said, just about a, a quarter teaspoon. Don't my, my wife doesn't like a whole lot of it, so just a little bit in your palm. You'll kind of see how much comes out in a minute. About a quarter teaspoon. Throw it in there. Now we're going to work everything down. Let it cook down a good bit. You'll start seeing the color change. It's going to start wind up getting dark. That makes your gravies and uh, your, your little roux, if you're going to make a roux of any kind and make a thick gravy, uh, really taste better when you cook these vegetables down, y'all. It just takes uh, maybe three or four minutes at the most, depending on how high your heat is. As you can see, the burner, I had it up high. Now I'm going to kind of uh, go ahead and make sure the oven is all the way preheated. Or I was cutting it down. I might have been cutting it down a little bit. Or no, I was cutting it on high. Because I want it to work, you know, cook itself down pretty quick. I don't want to stay in here long. No longer than I have to before I can get it in the oven, y'all. So I'm kind of just letting it, just let it do its thing and just keep stirring it, y'all. There's my beef bouillon cubes in that big jar. I'm going to get two of those and about a little more than a cup of water. That's what I had. There's there's two of them in there already. I'm going to stick that in the microwave for about five minutes. Let it kind of boil. Make a, you know, about a cup of beef broth. I don't like to use one per cup because it seems to be weak to me. So I usually put at least one more. So two per cup work, seems to work out pretty good. And you can see those veggie veggies starting to turn brown. They get to where they'll stick on the bottom. So you keep working them. Just keep stirring them. Don't sit too long. Don't walk off away from it if you've got it on high. They will burn. We're going to go in with about, I don't know, you could probably get away with a, a, a good tablespoon or a little more of Worcestershire sauce or W sauce, if you can't say it, or Worcestershire ever how you pronounce it. Just stick that in there. That's going to give it a really good flavor. This turned out really good, y'all, when we ate. It was absolutely wonderful. You'll definitely enjoy it. Your family will enjoy it for sure. I don't. You can serve this over rice uh, with some white fluffy rice or whatever. I'm gonna. You're gonna see what I do. We kind of treat this like a a, a protein bowl. Uh, it's just the way I like to eat it because I try to watch my carbs as much as I can. I know the onions and stuff aren't that great for carbs, but I'm not adding any rice. There's my granulated garlic. We're going to go in with a heaping spoon, y'all. Just get you a heaping spoon and just put him in there. Don't make this too hard, y'all. Don't overthink it. There's my dried parsley flakes. That doesn't, it gives it some good color. So you could put a, a you know, a good tablespoon or so of that in there. And just work all that in. Work it down. It's getting about done to where we're going to be ready to go back in with that roast. It's not going to be too much longer. Get everything kind of cooked down. Just get it kind of incorporated. You don't want to burn your garlic until it starts getting that little aroma of garlic. Uh, get some flavors going from the minced garlic and that's it. Now I'm going to grab the beef stock or the beef uh, broth that I made with the bouillon cubes. We're going to go ahead and grab the roast real quick, and we're just going to lay him back in. Get all the juices that got on the plate, dump that all back in there. That's all flavor, so just dump it back in there on top of it. Set that aside. Now take your little cup of broth and just drizzle him in there. Like I said, you don't want this to make a lot of gravy. You can add more broth if you do want it to make uh, more gravy. If you're actually going to be serving it over rice, you could probably go all the way up to two cups. And that'll give you enough. I didn't want a lot of gravy with this recipe just for the simple fact of the way I was going to be eating it. All right, so we're going to stick the lid on it. It's already bubbly and hot. And we're going to stick it into a preheated 350-degree oven 
which I actually do turn the speed bake on. Uh, and I'm going to let it stay in there at 350 degrees for, I think I set the timer for an hour and 45 minutes. Then after it got done, you'll see when I take it out, what I add to it next. No, I didn't have the speed bake on. My bad. So you can cut the roast with the, with the spoon. I mean, it, it falls apart. You're going to kind of just cut it up, get it into some smaller pieces. And as you can see, there's not a lot of juice in that. I'm going to get a little bit of juice out of what we're adding next. Some frozen broccoli florets. <clears throat> the, uh, because they're frozen, you're going to get just a little bit of uh, juice, not a whole lot. I put two bags, didn't cook it at all. Just put two bags of frozen uh, broccoli. That is steamable bags. You can cook it a few minutes if you'd like. Uh, it didn't take long at all when I stuck it back in the oven. You're just going to kind of leave it like that. Just kind of lay it flat. And we're going to put it back in the oven. And it wound up staying in the oven for about another uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Until the broccoli. I didn't want the broccoli mushy. I wanted it uh, al dente. I wanted it a little stiff. A little bit firm. That's just the way I like it. And it makes some really, really good bowls, y'all. Something you don't really have to watch this very much. It's kind of one of those things, once you get the roast brown, the onions and stuff cooked down, then you set it and forget it. Put it in the oven. You got a while to come back and get it out. And this is the final uh, thing. The broccoli is ready. We're just going to incorporate everything all together. And then we're going to serve it. It was absolutely wonderful, y'all. Is you if you want to change it up a little bit, you can add a little soy sauce, maybe some sesame oil, and get a little bit more oriental flavor if you would like, uh, just to change it up. But this was wonderful. Cut it up into pieces, and as far as something that's pretty low carb, uh, unless you serve it with rice or something, uh, it was absolutely wonderful. I hope y'all give it a try. And let me know in the comments uh, if you liked it. If you want to try it, uh, I'll try to answer back as I can. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. It helps us grow. Uh, we appreciate everybody trying to support us. Check us out at smalltownreshop.com. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.